Hi everyone, welcome to DelphiCon 2023. My name is Gustavo, and yes, we are celebrating 28 years of Delphi. Almost my age, I'm a little bit older than that. <laughs> and happy birthday to Delphi, and congratulations, because he pays my bills. So keep going, Delphi. The name of this session is Dismystifying Domain Driven Design, DDD, in Delphi. Before we started, let's go through the agenda of the session. So, first of all, I want to talk about what is DDD and also what is not DDD because there's a lot of misconception about what is and what is not, so I'm going to try to clarify that. I'm going to show you the main benefits to use DDD in your own projects. The main concepts, in fact, there, there is a lot of concepts uh, in, in domain-driven design, but we, we don't have all the time to, to go through all these concepts, all, all many concepts that DDD has. So here I'm going to show you the main concepts, which, we, which will be enough to, to have a, a, a forceful understanding about what is domain-driven design. A Delphi example using the main concepts. Some final tips about all the things that I'm going to show you here. And a Q&A session to finish. A little about myself. My name is Gustavo Mena Barreto. I'm a senior developer at Aquasoft. Aquasoft is a partner of Embarcadero and Aquasoft works with outsourcing. I have more than 10 years of experience in Delphi and also I'm a, I'm a content creator on Instagram. The name of the page is Force Coding and the meaning of that is because I like to code and I like Star Wars, so Force Code. Feel free to, to follow me there and, and check it out. Uh, every day I, I post tips of, of Delphi. Okay, let's start. Domain-driven design, DDD. What is that? Let's go break down uh, every, every, every word of domain-driven design, these three words. The first one, the domain. Uh, it's all about the domain. And what is that? What is do the domain? The domain is the heart of the software. It's the business area of the software. So it's the heart of the software that we are going to model, that we are going to model. So, driven design, uh, what, what, what does that mean? Driven design is that means that we are going to model the software focusing, focusing on solving the requirements on the business area of expertise. So, when you think in DDD, you got, you gonna think, you, you got to think in domain, in domain and, driven, and driven design. Domain is the heart of the software, the business area, and driven design is the modeling of the software to solve the, the requirements of the business area. It's not a technology. It's not a technology, guys. In fact, you can use you can use DDD in any technology that you want, any program language that you want. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you in Delphi because we love Delphi, but you can use it in, in any any program language that you want. And it's not a MVC architecture, and there's a a, a, a misconception in that part. Because if you if you search on the web, you you, you will find uh, you find several articles talking about creating a project using DDD and MVC, and that's okay. You can use it in that way, but DDD is one thing and MVC is another thing. Here in the image, you can see a domain layer here representing the DDD, lay, the DDD, and we have application layer, kind of MVC, who has, who has the controller, form, view, helper, and a infrastructure layer. These two groups of layers depends on the, on the domain layer about, about the, DDD, the, the DDD, but it's not the same. What does that mean? It's, it's, it means that you can use DDD with MVC or don't, because there are two different things. You can use 
only DDD in your project, or if you want to use uh, a MVC architecture or another ar architecture, you can use. But I just want to clarify that DDD is one thing and MVC is another different thing. And then there is this book, Domain Driven Design Tackling Complexity in the Heart of Software, written by Eric Evans. If you want to go, if you really to go, want to go deeper in in DDD and all, all, all the concepts, you must read this book. It's written by Eric Evans. Uh, Eric Evans, it's a uh, reference in domain driven design. He's in the 80s, he's already using the, the concepts, and in 2003, he launched this book and quickly became a Bible, a Bible of, of DDD. So, if you want to go, if you want to know everything about DDD, go in that book. Uh, I'm not going to lie, it's, it, it's a hard reading, and also it's not a technical book. You will find all the concepts here to implementing any technology that you want. Okay, now I'm going to show you the, the main benefits to use DDD in your own projects. The first one, the domain logic is totally independent of any technology for implementation. And what, what does that mean? The domain logic is the requirements of business area, which is equal, which is our domain, domain and is totally independent of any technology. Uh, today is very, very common to use uh, a software that uses many technologies, and DDD works fine with that, preserving the, the, the logic of the, of the business area of, our, of the domain. So DDD works fine with that. And yes, we're gonna have a, a clean code. Uh, when I show you the, the Delphi example, it's gonna make more clear for you guys about the clean code. Because we have layers and it makes much much more easy to, to see the code and, and alter the code. So we have clean code as well. And we have an alignment between business and the development. They were acquiring in business and the development. These two walks together. Okay, now it's time for the main concepts. In an organization that are you that are using DDD, we have two groups of teams. We have the development team and we have the domain experts. The development team talks about technical terms, technical stuff, so like program language, database, database, whatever. You know I'm, what I'm talking about. And the domain expert, experts uh, talk about business area terms. The domain experts are the one who, who knows about the business of the software that we are going to model. But but how can these two, how these two can, can understand each other? because the domain experts don't, don't know nothing about technical stuff and the development team don't know about the business area terms or at least don't know about everything. So how these two can, 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 can understand each other? They can understand each other with the ubiquitous language. And what is that? The ubiquitous language uses the terminology of the business reality. She is defined between developers and the domain experts and has the object of clarify communication between developers and the domain experts. So the main goal of the ubiquitous language it is to guarantee that everyone is on the same page. Everyone knows the all the all the, ter the terminology of, of the software and everyone can can understand each other because it's defined between developers and the, and the domain experts. So ubiquitous language is very important in, in, in domain-driven design. The domain and model. Let's go talk about the domain again. So the domain, heart of business area, heart of the software, and is the reason of software development to exist. 
Without the domain, we don't have any project, we don't have DDD, we don't have a software. So, as I talked a few slides before, it's all about the domain. Then we have the model. The model abstracts the complexity of the business area. And in DDD is, is, is very important. We, we don't want things much complex. We, we want to simplify things. Here, here's why we are using the model. And the model is evolutive. As long as we are modeling the software, the model is going to be evolutive. And the software requirements specification works together with the code implementation. The guarantee that the code implementation is, implements all the, the requirements of, of the software. Also, we have the bounded context and the context map. The bounded context is used for multiple subdomains and models. And that is the first time I'm talking about subdomains. And why? Because the main goal of DDD is abstracts the complexity, taking the complexity, make, make the things much more simple. So it makes sense to, to take in the domains and break, in, and, and break into subdomains to, to, to make this, the things more, more, more easily to understand and to, to, develop, to, de, in, to develop. So the bounded context defines the context and the applicability of subdomains, models, and how it relates to other subdomains and models. To see all that, we're going to need the context map, which is a visual map of all the models' bounded contexts, mapping off all, mapping off all bounded contexts and the relationships between them, to guarantee that everyone has no question about the models and the subdomains and the bounded context, just take a look of the context map to, to guarantee your, your understanding about all the project and all the, mod, the modeling of the software. Okay, uh, um, let's go clarify more of, of what I explained earlier with a visual example. Because there's a lot of uh, a lot of, of concepts, and I don't judge if 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 it's hard to to understand. So I'm bring here. I'm gonna bring here a, a visual example. Okay, we have this domain, a e-commerce domain, and it's easily to think in a few subdomains of e-commerce, like a subdomain of product catalog. With your, with, with with the bounded context, with the product application, the next step we will be it will be modeling the the product catalog, but we can think in another subdomains in a e-commerce situation, like a subdomain of stock inventory, and a subdomain of sales. And here is another benefit in, uh, about using DDD is that in that image. It makes more clear uh, the relationship between the, 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 the subdomains. Right here you can see that stock inventory has a relationship with the product catalog, which has a relationship with sales, and vice versa. So here is another benefit uh, of, of DDD, that visual part of DDD has. To guarantee that everyone has fully understanding of the domains, the models, and the bounded context. And my Delphi example is uh, is representing the model of the the product catalog. So if so, to make more simple, I'm I'm just modeling the the product catalog. But it it, it goes the same about if 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 of the subdomain stock inventory or subdomain sales. Okay. Now it's time to represent in the model. How we, how, with these five little guys here, these five layers here, the entity, the value objects, the repositories, the services, and the factory. The first one, the entity. 
the entity is not defined by their attributes. Have a unique identifier to guarantee that the that the entity in the project is unique. It's potentially mutable as long we, we develop and, and modeling the software, the entity can be mutable. And we can have all the trans transitory history of the entity. And then there is the value objects, which is related to, 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 to entities. A value object is an, is an object that adds value to entities, has no identity, and is immutable. immutable. Have the attributes of the entity, and it's defined by the value of attributes. We have the, the layer of repositories. The repositories have data, data layer access, persists entity data, and we have all the queries of of the entity right here. I'm talking, uh, just a comment here, I'm, talk, I'm talking about uh, uh, a specific repository of one entity. In my, in my example, in the file is gonna be, is gonna be of the, on, the prod, on the product catalog. So if you have all uh, another subdomains, another, another entities, there will be a specific repositories of that entity making the, 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 the data access only to the table that represents that, that entity, just, to, just to, to clarify that. And we have here uh, the layer of services who is implement the business logic and works with several entities and performs persistence through repositories. Here you will find the methods that do the magic implement business logic. So here we will find the procedures and functions calling the, uh, the layer of rep rep repositories and, and on and on. And we have the factory, which is responsible for properly constructing an object and, and an entity. Okay, time for Delphi. Let's go through to our Delphi example. But first of all, I want to show you, show you to you guys the the project structure using the main concepts. So here, I have a folder with the source, the source code, and I have a folder with the representing the the product the product catalog, with the layers here: entity, forms, repositories, services, and value objects. And that's the first time I'm talking about forms. You won't find forms, a layer of forms in, in, the, in a book of DDD because, because that is my solution to representing the visual part of my, of my, of my project. I create a, a layer about, about forms. So what does that mean? If you won't find uh, this uh, this layer representing in the book, uh, what is that means is DDD is not a cake recipe. It's gonna be different from project to project. Forms is my solution, but maybe another developer in another project in DDD is gonna find another solution to represent the the visual part of the of of the software. So just to clarify that that. It's gonna be different from project to project that are using DDD. Okay, let's let's go to Delphi to see to see the Delphi example. So here is is my example. It's a very simple example. Here in here in the main form of the product, we have two edits here. One for the the code, the product code and the description of my product and we have the a button who has the function to to load from my access database uh, a specific product before we 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 get we before we see the the code of the of the the clip of the event the click event of the button let's let's go watch the the layers here 
So the first layer is entities. You have a unit product here. And here is a very simple class here representing my entity product. And we have three fields. One is FID, F product code, and this the, the F the description code. FID is an internal code, only makes only for my database. And the, the, the product code and the description code is, is gonna be on that form in the end. So here you can see that it's not the, the types of these this fields is not integer or 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 a string is uh, a, a specific type and this specific type here is makes reference to the to the value objects remember the value objects contains the the value of the attribute of the of the entity the attributes of the entity so let's go watch um, the layer of value objects. So here we have all the all the value of the type value of my attributes of the of the product entity. So we have the the product code is the type of string, the description code type string, pr product ID is TID, which is integer, and here is another is another benefit to use to to use if you want to to later on alter some type here, you know where the code is here is on the value objects, and you only you only have to do is alter the the type ref, uh, who who is referred to referring to to the attribute of the entity. So here is another another great benefit here. Okay, let's go to the to the layer of the repositories. Here we have two units here. One is the connection DB and the other is the product repository. Connection DB is is the connection of of, of, of the database. Here um this unit here is on the repositories of the of the product catalog. But if the project is if this project here has more than one on one domain and multiple domains, probably this this unit here is gonna be on on the another layer um, um, on another layer. But it's a simple example, and I and I put in on that on that layer here. And it's a very it's a very simple simple unity. There's a IF connection here, and we have a constructor who initialize and create the connection the connection for of my dat database access for the whole project. And when I start the project, let's see right here. After the application initialize here, I, I create the connection right here. Again, it, it's a, a very simple way just to, to show you the main concepts here, but you can use in another in different ways as you want. Okay, let's go to the to the product repository. And the product repository persists persists persist the, the, the data of the of, of the entity. Now. And we have uh, the methods here: get, add, remove, update. The only that that I'm that I'm using here is is the met, is the method get. Um, the, he has a parameter here like the ID of the type product ID, who refers to my product value objects right here. You can see. And let's go back here. And it's a it's a simple method here who who, ret who makes a, a select on on the pro on the table products and using the parameter ID right here. And this method here returns a a, a T product, a entity, a entity. So in the end here, the result is gonna be a fully loaded. Uh, fully loaded 
entity with all all the attributes that comes from the fields of, of my table problems here. Okay, the next step is is the services. Let's go let's go to the services, product services. The product services, as I told you before, con implements the business logic, contains the methods. Here I create a class function. This, this, class, this, this class function here is going to load my, my product, so the parameter is the, the product ID. The type refers to the product value objects. And this function here creates, creates a, an instance of repository and calls the, the function of repository, the function get using the using the the product id and the result and the result is is, is the same because the, the class this class function here is results also results a, a, a t product a entity so in one line we we resolve that okay now it's time to to go back to to the form here and and see the the code of of my button here First of all, before we we see the the code of the code of, of the events of the, of the button, I create two functions here. One it's get product form, and who it's return a t product my entity, and a procedure set product form has a parameter of t product here the the entity itself, and I have a property here, product prop of the type of the product, read get product form and set product form here. So the button here calls the procedure set set product form and in, in, in the parameter we are using the prod the product prop here. The next step get product form it calls the it calls the the class method of, of, of the services, load product. Here I'm using the number two, fix it. But if you if you want to to make an interaction with the with the user, you can pass the parameter here in an edit or, or whatever. Just 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 to show you here in this simple project I I decide to use a, a number two fix it here. So the result of get product form is gonna be is gonna be the result of load prod load product from the services and set product form is gonna is gonna set the edits here with the with the value of, of, of here of my of my entity here. So so the order of that is gonna be set product form calls load products and later on is going to be on the edit here the the entity load in the edits so let's go watch here I'm run the pro I run the, the project and I'm going to click on load product and yes load the 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 product of code A002 and the description product test here. Very simple, as you can see, the the name of the of the entities is very clear as well. So you know what's going on, and when you later on you you if you if you need to, to alter something, it's very clear for all the project here. Okay, let's go let's go back to today's slides. Okay, now it's the time for the, the final tips. Read books and content before venturing professionally. And why is that? Uh, 
if you are working in an organization in a company and you want to to apply in in the projects of the company DDD okay but if you don't know what you're doing if you're not fully prepared of DDD it may cost some something to the to the company so you're gonna suggest to your boss and your boss is gonna is gonna be okay do it and suddenly the things are not going too well you you think you know it you think you know all about the D but when you when you when you are working the things are a little bit different so make sure that you are fully prepared make make online courses read books and content before venture professionally to to know that you know everything about DDD, about working with DDD. It will be challenge, I'm not gonna lie. It, it, it was challenge to do this research in DDD, so working with DDD is, is a quite a challenge. Try a lot and expect to make a lot of mistakes. And this is go for the for the beginners, for the seniors, whatever. Uh, mistakes, it, it's part Mistakes is a part of, of our job and beginners and, and, and seniors and experienced developers make, make mistakes as well. But don't be discouraged. Modeling, modeling is, a, is a creative process. And domain-driven design is best suited to, to implement only in projects of complex systems. And it makes sense because we, we want to make things simple, we want to, to take the complexity of things. You know, so, so if you want to, to use in a simple project that doesn't have much or any requirements of, of business area, it doesn't make sense to, doesn't make sense to use DDD. Only in, in bigger projects with many, many requirements of business area, so DDD works fine in that. And if you are ready, the journey will be worth it in the end because there's a lot of a lot of benefits in in, in DDD. And that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for for having me here. Thanks for the opportunity to to talk to to you in DoFiCon 2023. Here is my links to get in touch with me, my, my Instagram for my Instagram page for scolding, my, my email and my LinkedIn profile. This this example here you can find on my on my link in, in, in the bio of my, my Instagram. So you, you will find on my GitHub on, on there on my on the page of Instagram. It's very easy to find to find. So now we're gonna we go to the Q&A session live and thank you for having me here. Thanks. So if anybody has questions about uh, domain driven de design, what you heard, <laughs> go ahead and put them in there. Uh, Dion did say great session. I, the, yeah, there was a lot of good stuff in there. Okay, here's a comment here. Very interesting. It sounds like an enormous work if the domain is very large. Is there a code generator to use someplace? I've got a lot. Of I've got a generator working in my own information modeling tool built in Delphi. No, in, in fact, there's 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 not a, a code generator. I, I do it by, by, with myself, but it's a it's a good idea to do a I don't know make uh, or all O R M like R -M. that and mm -hmm. uh, yes and because yes it's a. Uh, uh, Imagine if, if we are dealing with a very complex system, a, a huge system, and a lot of entities, a lot of layers. So, a generator like that will be uh, will be fantastic. Mm -hmm. But no, there's uh, I don't know if if there if, if exists or in in the OFI, I, I I can I can for sure that doesn't exist because it is 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 quite uh, new in in the Delphi community. I've built code generators in the past for Delphi, not specifically to domain-driven de design, though. But there, you know, there it should be possible. There's the uh, Delphi AST out there as well that is useful. Could be useful in that. I'm trying to think. That's a parser. There's a comment here. Samuel said, "I found it interesting. You mentioned that there's a big difference between domain-driven design and MVC. Yes, 
But yeah, we 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 are we are talking about code generator. You see, you use gens, but not in DDD. Yeah, I I made a code generator long long ago for um, it was what what I had is a system where I had two databases that I was trying to move yeah. data between, and I had to customize it, and so it would generate some of the code that I could then customize uh, to to do the data the. the import export processes so it generate parts of it and then parts of it i would modify um i mean so it's if you can write code you could generate code <laughs> you know it's yes it's, yes <laughs> yes uh, we, we want we want the we want the easy part yep there was a comment about the um i thought it was interesting that you pointed out the differences between mvc and domain driven design Yes, yes. There's a several articles in other languages uh, talking about DDD and MVC, and the way that the who wrote the the article, you may think that it's the same thing, but it don't. Uh, you can use with 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 MVC, uh, uh, adding the layers of MVC as well, but you 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 not. It's not a, a rule that you that you must must follow. Uh, mm -hmm. Personally, myself, I with uh, with the DDD, I, I think the DDD works fine without MVC, but there's no problem at all. But there's a lot of misunderstanding in that part. The uh, the people 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 read all oh, layers in DDD. Oh, it's the same layers of MVC, and there are different. Yeah, you have uh, MVVM and MVC also are similar. It's one of those things. It's like people have a certain way of doing things, and then when there's a new way. It's like, oh, well, that's different than what I'm doing. It must be the same as the other one's different than what I'm doing. But there is yes, yes. Uh, Patrick's right. asking, is uh, DDD like ORM or ORM like DDD? Are there, what are the, you mentioned ORM earlier, but are there similarities between ORM and DDD or are they different or are they complementary? Uh, good question. I never, I never thought in that way. Uh, I believe there are some similarities, but um, I'm not quite quite sure the the right answer for for that but but it certainly has the similarities both i don't I know if you if, if you if you think a, a different gen i i'm not sure i'm not, not sure honestly i'd have to think about it and see i find a lot of times with these new paradigms like functional programming for example is at first i may be like i actually i Okay, I, I have the gray in my beard. I can say this. Uh, I remember back when object-oriented programming was new. <laughs> and I remember thinking, what do you need all those objects for? Pff, I don't need those. I can do it all with my uh, procedural programming. And it took a while for me to wrap my head around it. And then I was like, oh, okay, object-oriented programming is pretty cool. And now that's predominantly what I do. But I still sometimes do procedural programming, mix it up, mix it up there, right? Same thing with functional programming, right? Functional programming is mm -hmm. a new paradigm. You might be like, I don't need that functional programming. I can do it just fine with my object-oriented programming. But what I found is that even if you don't wholesale adopt functional programming or DDD, I think that learning about these new paradigms is useful in that sometimes it's like, oh, that's a that one piece of it right there could be really useful here and I could use that. So uh, yeah, it's great even if you don't adopt it completely. Uh, yes. There's definitely a lot to a benefit and learn from that. And the guys who is talking here about R RRM and it makes sense to you to use DDD. I, I never, I, I, I could, I could think in, into you in use DDD with RRM in the future. It mm -hmm. make my life much more easier. <laughs> there's a number of RRM frameworks out there for Delphi. Um, let's see. Roland says, uh, "How would you solve the issue that?" The shared kernel shall only be modified if all consumers agree to such a change. I'm not sure if I really understand the the contest. Shared shared kernel shall only be modified at, if consumers yeah. agree to such a change. I'm not sure actually either, to be honest. Um, let's see here. What's the best pattern to tackle the issue of requirements different to what the shared kernel provides? An, another shared kernel. Uh -huh. Roland, if you have some more cl clarification of what shared kernel you mean by shared kernel. Uh, Case Talk says, object relation mapping is not the same. They could align, but it's really not. ORM, 
in that sense is an object to a database persistency approach, right? Yes, but so, I think in, but I think in, in the in the layer of of DDD that works with the with with the with the database, you can. So. Um, Roland says ORM allows you to efficiently develop in DDD mode. I, I think that, yeah, there is, if I understand correctly, again, Gustavo is more of an expert on this, but that ORM is a, gives you that ability to have another layer below, like as, as Patrick said, that DDD is the higher abstraction layer. DDD is to ease OO programming using this business entities. The dilemma is that one need to really understand the domain first. For that information modeling is a requirement, yes. And that that's a really big deal in, so I used to work at a company that did industrial engineering, like big power plants and uh, stuff like that. And we were building software for estimating those projects. And as a, I came in as a developer, I knew how to develop software, but then I had to wrap my head around what the domain of, uh, estimating software looked like. And that was, oh, wow, interesting stuff, really cool. Xdata, for example, allows you to create a repository without a load of hassle based on Aurelius. Big fan of Aurelius and Xdata, great tools. Case Talk says object relation mapping ORM is not the same as object role modeling, which is also ORM. We have too many acronyms. <laughs> um, shared kernel is a DDD concept. Yes, 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 yes. I, I remember. I, I did not mention this this concept because I have to. I I I have to choose. I have to choose what concept I I gonna bring in the, in in the yeah. in the in the session or, or don't. And some uh, I I right now I can't remember uh, the right point of Cherry Kernel because there's a lot of concepts and and that book that I mentioned earlier I. I read al almost the, the the whole book, but I may I I, I this is my first research about about the I, I got I gotta to go really deep in in the other concepts. But but yeah, share the share, share the kernel is a the, the concept that I choose not to 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 talk in the in the session because I really I really want to 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 make more much more simple to, for a full understanding of the first first uh, first uh, first meeting in in uh, first meet in ddd but i i i need to to research more about shared kernel uh, in in the in the beginning of my research i i i, I was reading a lot about all the concepts but this concept it, it escapes me in that right now I find, it, especially for technical books, I, I rarely read them like cover to cover because I start reading them and then I'm like, oh, I want to try this. And then I go work on and, something and I never get back to it. And the, and, the, and the DDD book that I mentioned, it's not a technical book. There's no any language at all. It's only the concepts you can, you can. So it's really, it's really hard reading. So much concepts you, you need to study that book a lot. But it's a Bible. It's it's definitely a, a Bible and a reference if you want to really go deeper. Okay, Jeff, I'll definitely check it out. Um, finding a good way to take the business domain knowledge for the challenging you are developing for into your code is about having good entity naming structure workflows, etc. Yes, yes. One one of one one of the benefits if you if you if you know how how are using DDD, it's it's that. That's simple names, names there are you you read you know what 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 is about so and yes and I and I and I read some when I when I when my when my when my having international uh, internet issues here I I, I read a, a other comment that let me see if I can find here I, I... so no pain no gain asked about uh, templates for VCL for. MVVM or MVC. Um, there are a few of them out there. The only one I could think of right now is Columbus Egg, but I don't think it's been updated in a while. Um, but there are others. Um, oh, gosh. I'm not remembering. There are some templates out there for for uh, MVVM, MVC for Delphi. Did you find the comment you're looking for? Uh, yes, yes, I found a uh, case talk. Uh, DDD is too, it's, it's too easy all programming using business entities. The, the dilemma is is that 
one needs to really understand the domain first for that information modeling is a requirement. Yes, if you don't know the 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 domain, the the requirements, business of the domain, the the heart of the software, don't start the nothing. You really you because you you have the domain experts who, who which can be the client, which can be. Uh, analysis of, of, of requirements, uh, someone who knows the business and and are the we are developers we don't know all all the all the terminologies of the business we know we know we know how to code but so yeah. it's, it's very it's, it's very important uh, have someone who who really knows the, the, the business and if and it's be very supportive in the team when when uh I was working on that estimation software for the engineering company. We had this, these huge diagrams. They were literally like this big, just huge pieces of paper and just stacks and stacks of them. And there were times that we would implement things and then we'd send it off to the users. And they're like, what about this? And we're like, what do you mean? And it's like, oh, we have to add more. There wasn't in the specification. It's like, oh my goodness. It's just, it, <laughs> it, it is yeah, it, yeah. It, understanding that and getting it in there, capturing those requirements is such a big, big deal. Such a huge undertaking. If we were to apply DDD in a simple project, what are the first classes or modules to develop? Well, I think you, you, you first of all, well, uh, ju just to clarify, you won't, you won't, uh, it's not necessary to use DDD if, it, if it's a simple project. I, I do not recommend because it's, it's more, it's, it complicates much that you don't need. So, but uh, answer your question, I think you, before that, you need to, to take the 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 principal the the main domain of, of your so like a, a product catalog for mm -hmm. example you you're gonna be a, a catalog which be with, with you you have a form and code of product this description start with that start with the very simple idea that 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 you that, that you want uh, so in the in in the classes that you that you must uh, start with the the entity I think the entity is the, the the first layer because you 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 will you will be representing the 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 product itself in in that example so start with the entity so in in that order that I that, that I mentioned in the in the in the session entity value objects and uh, the next was service, uh, services and, and repro repositories, which he, which he communicates with the with the with database. So in that in the in that order that I that I show you in the in the session makes sense. I read an interesting book a while back, and I cannot remember what it was called, but it about um, iterative development, and it talked about when you're building your minimum viable product. Right. Yes. That it's not. You don't just implement one feature. Right. You have to think about what is the, you know, what are the the few features? How do these few features that are implemented, you know, just bits of these features, that make it yes. make it into yes. something that works. Right. And so you can't just say, I just want to do this completely, and then I'll do this completely. Instead, you have to say, okay, I'm going to do the part of this and the part of this that need it in order for it to all work together and be something. And so that yes. again goes back to that idea of how do you have to really kind of wrap your brain around what the product project yes, is. Yes, and did and, and you have the, the context map? All right, well, it's about time for the next session. Uh, I do want to, oops, click the wrong thing. I do want to just make a comment here. Uh, Case Talk was saying, uh, DD is great, but T data set is so much better to use in development environment. How to combine classes, uh, objects and classes to D T data set. So this is a really good question. Um, this is one of the things, uh, T-Dataset is great for just that quick, rapid development process. But then when you want to take it and move it into a um, uh, a more sustainable, easier to maintain, loosely coupled system, DDD is a great solution for that. Um, I'm trying to remember, I, we were looking at this a while back, but you can have a T-Dataset inside of your, um, right? So you're, Domain-driven design can be using a data set internally. Uh, that, I, I'm, I mean, I'm not understanding the question, but there are there are solutions for that. Uh, let's see. Roland said, oh, let's see. Let's start with this one here. A realist intra entity model. Okay. And then I would create repositories of X data, which would shape the isolated domain layer. 
yeah, so that's another great solution out there as well. Um, anyway, thank you, Gustavo. Sorry for your internet issues. It's just the nature of it sometimes. Appreciate you're putting the session together, though, and I will definitely be checking out that book that you recommended as well, and we'll get the replay up with better quality 